All right. So I'll go over how do you quickly how to install it if you want to learn it, the types of data, simple program that I wrote. Let's go over a simple loop and I'll show you uh, what I was actually doing at work. Uh, okay. Python is an interpreter and you can get um, it's all free. It, <laughs> <laughs> it's all free and you go to python.org they've got free programs i'm i'm using um high charm as an editor and development uh base and it there's free editions and the free editions are quite complete uh and it gets comes from a company called jetbrains.com slash python and that it works fine another another editor environment is spider s p y d e r dash i d e dot org and i've used that too and so i bought a number of books over to basically i started this project in in june i had started a project a year ago in python but I, I had this really great summer intern and he ran away with my project, which was a, a very simple uh, test, high voltage test set. And he did a, I mean, a beautiful bang up job with, uh, considering he didn't know it when he started with us in June and he finished it in like, by the end of August, I was, I was impressed, but he, he wanted too much money. Uh, it's going to his head and he wanted a hundred dollars an hour while he sat in his dorm room so i we didn't go with that um okay there's various types of data and and it probably holds true for uh other programming environments i mean you have boolean data which is either true false or also none and and to do an identity to say that two things two things are equal to each other not numerically equal you use a double equal sign in in a logical statement uh there's comments and you put a hashtag in front and you can write this is a comment we have integer values one two three minus one etc and then you have the floating point numbers which are positive or negative so they have a decimal point and uh numbers can can be converted from uh from decimal to floating and floating to decimal and uh, as i'll get to later uh there are also strings strings are uh, basically uh any characters and they're treated not as a number or is a statement, but simply as a string of characters, like, quote, the brown fox was five years old. That five, if you wanted to ask how old is the brown fox, you would have to parse this statement and try to find a number in it. Strings, strings can be enclosed in Python with single quotes and double quotes, and they have different purposes, which I won't go into. There's also triple quotes, they say, for multiple lines, but also triple quotes can be used for an extended comment. So if you wanted to comment out a whole paragraph of code, you could put triple quotes in front and 20 lines later, you could put triple quotes and that just ignores everything in between. So like a number can be... Uh, made into a string so string parenthesis five is identical to a five in quotes if i and some strings can be made numeric so five is equal to the integer of a number of of the string character five and it could also be made into a floating point number now you can multiply integers and floating point, but you can't multiply five times string five, you'll get an error. So those are things, some of the things in Python. 
I had a, here's a real example. I had a bought a uh, English made uh, high frequency counter and it was fairly inexpensive. It was a company called TTI, which was uh, really a weird name. Uh, find it in a minute. But uh, they made this counter. I looked at the Hewlett, you know, key site, which is Hewlett Packard and Agilent and so on, to buy a, a simple programmable counter timer unit. Cheapest ones were like three, four thousand dollars. This TTI 930 was five hundred dollars and it did everything, almost everything the far more expensive um, key site unit would do, but it it doesn't it didn't use the same uh, control syntax. It had a more primitive uh, control uh, dictionary. But so nonetheless, whether I use the key site or I used the TTI, it outputs the numbers. The data comes out as a string. So I have a number like one, two, three point four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh nine, and then e to the minus three, meaning ten to the minus third power seconds. So that would be a hundred and twenty three milliseconds. But as it comes out, my program can't read it. So I had to con I had to convert this by parsing out. The uh, the up the each individual character and make it come out as a number. So I wrote a little program here. Uh, I made some data in that same format, and then what I did was I used there's a string format controls, and I you could pick out the first the first element is element zero, and you wanted to find you wanted all the characters from element zero all the way to element uh, 11. And you have to write it as, for some reason, you have to write it in this, call it 12, so you include the last letter. So I wrote this and I was able to, get it. I started off with, this is what the data looked like coming out of the uh, timer. And the first step I pulled, I was able to drop the e to the minus three s. Then I asked it, what is the value of the exponent? And by parsing it again, I was able to pull up the minus three. Then I reconstructed all the numbers. And I said that the time is, is the uh, numerical portion times 10 to the exponent. And there it is. And it comes out finally as 0.5123 seconds, which is what I wanted to get. So, and I, in fact, today I implemented that at the office and, and I got the whole program running. Now you have numerical operators. I mean, the whole thing is in programming is you got, none of this is written in the book. You have to know what do you want to do? What's your problem? And how are you going to find the solution? And that's basically what I didn't, I never in my life thought I would write a data parsing program, but I had to, because here's the data sitting in front of me. And I'm I'm like, okay, what do I do with it? It's, it's even worse when it comes out of my data acquisition system, because the data acquisition system might be taking 20 readings in a row and they're all separated by commas, and it's still a string. So now you got to find each group of data. And I had to write a, a program to do that. So in Python or any other language, you've got numerical operators. You got multiply, divide, exponents, add and subtract. And you'd write, personally, I used I use parentheses. I I don't believe in in pre wake up, Fred. <laughs> okay, you can do logical statements, and if you go to python.org, it it it's just loaded with a, a whole syllabus right there on the screen, 
And this is like a sample page. Uh, here it says, if X is less than zero, then X is equal to zero and print a statement. So these are a number of cases that it looks. So there's the first case, L if, else if, L if. And every logical statement has to be terminated with a colon. And every time you don't do it, it'll you'll you'll see the errors just light up, especially using PyCharm. It it you're not going to get far making errors because it's going to nail you on every line, and and you're going to work on each line by line till you clear your error, your syntactical errors. Then your your logical errors is another problem. Here's another example that was on on pi on pi charm of find finding prime numbers it's the the hard way but basically you're looking to divide you're looking to see if there's a remainder when you divide and the and the percent sign n percent sign x is what is the remainder of the number so it there's all sorts of interesting things you can do with the uh commands there um instrument control that's some that's something you'd want to do uh if you had a uh if you plot had used uh, some of the uh programs for instrument control like um um well i'm, I'm using a key site program that that can search search the inputs and see if there is a uh, addressable instrument on there and so uh, that uh, uh in my case i'm using a combination of gpib instruments that's the old that's the big fat connector the ieee 488 bus and a couple of instruments are on the usb bus and so when you uh try to um hook up to an instrument you're going to get a, a a command like this that says it it finds the resource that's how it's written and you can write various i'm renaming this whole line here as what i call dac 973 which is model 973 key site data acquisition system uh then i wrote reset it I'm telling it uh, to configure the temperature for a type J thermocouple at port 119. And the board, ha I have plug in boards for the data acquisition system. And uh, one is a, is a straight, uh, is the inputs for the D to A converter, and two other boards are for form C switches to uh, select various data and control loops so i wrote this little program this is just a little uh sample program to measure the temperature and humidity i have a an omega humidity gauge and a type j thermocouple now so on port 120 it's looking for the dc voltage coming out of the uh, humidity sensor and uh Again, the data acquisition system outputs a, a data string, and I've I've had to write a program. So the first element that comes out is is the temperature in centigrade, and the second item that comes out is the data for the relative humidity, and then I uh, take that data is then returned to the main system. So here's my office, and um, this is the setup we've got a I've got an HP computer on the floor that I had in my lab in in Greenwich when I this remember I sold my business like three years ago to Parker Medical and I've been consulting there a day a week since then so this is a dynalyzer digital display and it's used for calibrating x-ray generators and close up of the test set is we have a a key site uh, function generator, the TTI timer counter, which runs past two gigahertz. 
a uh, data acquisition system that's connected by the uh, GPIB bus and a, a triple output power supply. And the output of all the uh, of the data acquisition system goes to this patch panel. And ultimately this gets connected to a number of, to two high voltage power supplies, a high voltage AC DC amplifier, a, uh, and a bunch of other, some DC power supplies, et cetera. So from this, we have a whole big rack of, of, of high power equipment that I have to control. And the reason I'm doing it is because I wrote the original program 30 years ago in quick basic, and there's no way you can support that anymore. So um, thank you. And the way I did it is I learned by my mistakes and I won't sell spell Stanford wrong next time. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much for listening. And then uh, stop share. Okay. Any questions? Hello? 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 You're all any... muted, by the way. So if you want to talk, you can talk. You have any questions? Uh, remember, I'm not, I'm not the expert programmer here. We got guys in this club that do it for, for a living. I do it because I want to finish this project and then go back to retirement or something. Or, but it worked, right, Johnny? 